All right, so now we're on to chapter 3.1, part two. Part two. Um, as we saw right before I had to um, stop <laughs> for uh, my fourth period class, um, we saw that um, angles one and angle three, if we go ahead and use our um, green pen to mark them off, Okay, and then we cover up the lines that are not important in this particular, or for these particular two angles, then we can go ahead and see that these are in fact corresponding angles as they are on the same side of the transversal and do not both lie inside of our two lines, our two lines in this case being K and L. Moving on to the second one, I went ahead and labeled that one with red. So we're looking now at angle three okay, and angle 11. So I have to go ahead and uncover this. Okay. Now in this particular case, I can see that I'm going to be working with lines T and L as those are the ones that make up angle three and lines L, I already know about that one, and N as those are the ones making up one angle 11 and it will not be working with line K so I'm going to go ahead and cover that up so it doesn't confuse me okay and here I can clearly see okay that we are um, the the two lines here are both intersected by line L meaning that our lines are line um, T and N okay and line L is our transversal in this case. Okay. And we can continue to do that for the rest of them. Okay. For the blue line here, we have, or we have angle 10 and angle 11. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those ones here. In this case, take a second and try to decide which angle we will not be using. Um, as you, uh, hopefully, um, giving you a couple seconds, you would see that T is not included and have, really has nothing to do with our two blue angles here. And if we go down, we can see that they're both inside the lines, okay? So I'm only gonna be looking at same side or um, alternate interior angles. And I see that they're on the same side here, so I can see that it is in fact going to be same side interior angles, okay? Oop, that's not even what this one's asking, but, um, they um, obviously the two lines and I kind of covered it up here but I can see that these two lines here okay, and those ones being K and L are the lines being used and the transversal cutting through both L and K is none other than line N which makes it the transversal okay continuing on we can see that angle 6 Okay. And angle nine, we're gonna use pink for those ones. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and cover up the lines that we are not using in this case. And so in this particular case, I can see that these two angles are both inside of both, and I kind of covered it up a little bit there, angle or line T and line N, these two here and they are cut by line K right through here. So K would then be the transversal and the two lines that K goes through, and again, the two angles are bound by N and T. Okay, I'll leave number five for you. Moving on to classification. In classification, I did that with a couple of ones up here. So I'll do the first two and leave the last three for you um, to attempt on your own, but should be relatively easy. Again, color coding is a great tool to help you through this. All right, so the first one here, we see that we're talking about angle one and angle three. Okay. And I'm still gonna go ahead and use the method of kind of you know covering up all the lines that we're not really using. And I can see that I'm not really t using this line. I'm only using these two and this one. Those are the ones that are touching my angle one and angle three. Okay. And in this case, I can identify that this is the transversal as it intersects the other two lines here and here. Okay. And then looking down to my chart, which I covered up, okay, I can see that since we're talking about these two lines here, um, one of the angles is on the outside of the two lines and the other is on the inside. 
and I know just kind of from memory and from the ones up here that the only case where they don't both lie inside the lines is corresponding angles. And if you look back to page one, you'll see that these two would here would be corresponding angles. I'll use a little abbreviation there. And then moving on to six and seven, we see that we're here and here. Hey, once again, I feel that fairly confident that I can cover up the last one here so that I'm not getting confused. I'm going to fold up my paper so that I can still see my chart down here. All right, and we can see that the angles are bounded by these two, meaning that this line here is still the transversal. And this time, our angles are both on the inside. Okay, so I see that it could either be same side interior, alternate interior. So I go over here and I check to see if they are on the same side of the transversal as well. Okay, and this being the transversal, I do see that they're both on the same side. So this one here would be same side interior. Okay. Moving on to number three, and I know I said I only do the first two, but I'll leave the last two for you. Angle two and angle seven. And I'm not gonna cover it up this time because I'm starting to see a pattern and I know that I'm still not gonna be working with this particular line here. Okay? But I can see that they're still bounded by those same lines. This time they are both on the interior of these two lines. So I know that I'm either gonna be at same side interior or alternate interior. And this time if I look at the transversal, I have an angle on one side and then the other angle is on the alternate or the opposite side. So in this case, I go over and I see that they're on the opposite side, so I'm going to be talking about alternate interior angles. Angle 2 and angle 7 are alternate interior angles. I should have put angles up here as well. All right. If you have further questions, you can, of course, ask in class, although we did finish up this lesson a couple days ago. Um, and I'll go ahead and look forward to section 3.2, where we get to explore parallel lines.